Hey again, welcome to Barry Darnall Art. I'm Barry Darnall, and we're going to get right back into our drawing tonight of the Lincoln car. Um, <clears throat> real quicker, I want to apologize for running late on getting started. I had some technical difficulties. I think I've got it figured out. Um, if you're tuning in and you're seeing the video and the audio, let me know how it sounds. Let me know how it looks. Um, also, if you haven't already done so, I would really appreciate it if you would uh, like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me grow the channel. It helps me get the channel noticed. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll also uh, get uh, links to my videos. You'll get notified any time that I post a new video or a live stream. So with that said, let me get into this here and let's get started with this drawing. Okay. Um, so last week when I ended off, I, I had done some inking up here in the windows and I finished up some of the drawing. I put in the grill work here on the upper and lower grills. I also put in some lines here so that I know where some of my major shadow and highlight areas are at. So what I want to start off with now is I want to get into this grill work down here. So we're just going to jump right into it. And here we go. And here we go. Now I'm just going to start off with outlining these, this grill area. And then my plan is to come back in with the brush and ink and ink in the majority of each of these. So, this is a little bit of a time-consuming process here to get in and do this kind of detail work on it, but that is part of pen and ink, and it's actually part of it that I enjoy. Now, one of the things that I did want to bring up tonight and talk a little bit about is what's coming up next month. Um, some of you may have heard about this before. Some of you may have never heard about it before, but it is an art event on the internet that is called Inktober. Inktober. Um, essentially what it is, is it's a one month event where artists basically each day they have a different prompt for something that they're going to draw and they do their drawings and then they share those drawings. Uh, most of them share them on the internet, on YouTube or Facebook. Um, I did a few of those last year and really enjoyed it. Last year was the first year that I had actually done Inktober. And so I am making plans to do it again this year. Uh, I downloaded the list of subjects last night and I started going through them and started giving some thought to what I'm going to draw. Um, so it gives you subjects, like I said, 
Um, for example, the first subject for the month for October 1st is crystal. So that is the uh, prompt that you get and then what you decide to draw from that point on to illustrate that topic is up to you. And I've kind of got a game plan that I've come up with and I will share that but I'm going to hold on to my game plan for another week or so at least before I share that because I want to work out some of my ideas in my head and maybe do a few um, small practice drawings of some things just to make sure that what I'm thinking about doing is going to work out the way I hope it will. Um, but when I start doing those drawings, I will post them uh, every day. I'll, I'll set it up so that my drawings, my, the videos of my drawings um, get posted every day. I'm not sure what time I will post them yet, but I will settle on a, hopefully a regular schedule for posting those videos and anybody who is subscribed, anybody who um, has hit the like button and the uh, notification button will get notified when those drawings are getting released. And like I said, I think it's a neat event. Um, I've gone back and looked at several videos that other artists have done over the years and it's, it's, it's really interesting to see other artists do their work. Now, if you're tuned into this right now, or if you've gone out and watched my videos, um, you can kind of appreciate what I'm talking about as far as how enjoyable it can be to watch an artist do their work, to watch what they're doing unfold and, and come to life. And I don't know, I may do, I probably will do at least a couple of live streams in October where I'm working on some of my drawings. A couple of them are going to be fairly quick and simple, I think. So when I get to those, I may just do live streams on those and I will try and make sure that everybody is aware of when that will be. And I would encourage you to go take a look at it. Um, you can just go out and do a search for Inktober and it should bring you to the website. And then if you go out there, it will, um, you can, you can pretty quickly locate the list and there are some videos out there that, that you can watch about different ways to participate in Inktober. Um, it does not cost anything to participate. Um, it's just, um, an event, the artist who created it, he started doing it kind of as a, uh, a, an opportunity to practice his craft of, of inking and he shared it with people and it became popular and as it gained popularity, he created an annual event out of it. And so now that's what it is. It's Inktober. It's a fairly significant event these days. And like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to it again this year. I did it last year for the first time and I enjoyed it. And so I'm looking forward to participating in it again this year. Okay, so I've got some of that line work put in, and now I'm going to get in here and start doing some inking. So, um, if you're tuned in, um, again, welcome. I'm, I'm glad to have you here. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, 
Um, thank you for tuning in. If you're coming back, thank you for coming back. Um, I hope everybody has had a good week this week. Uh, I know mine had a few challenges in it here and there, and um, but those things are behind us, hopefully, and the rest of the week is going to go well. And, you know, like I've said before, and in some of my comments, sitting here and working on drawings is, is part of my escape from the stresses of day-to-day -day life. Um, this, is, this is where I come sometimes to kind of step away from it and give myself a break. So... I do want to take an opportunity. We had some good news this week or towards the middle of this week. Um, my stepson and his girlfriend got engaged and they actually got married. Um, it was kind of a quick turnaround on things and there was some reasons to do with he's in the military and they're getting ready to transition to a new a new uh, assignment and so they needed to take care of that but we my wife and I wish them all the best we were both really excited for them and we hope that they have a, a very good and productive marriage I give her a hard time. She's she's a really fun lady, and she uh, takes it well. But I go out of my way to give her a, a hard time. But I love her. She's a she's a special woman, and I'm glad that that our that my stepson and my wife's son have uh, found each other and are moving on in their life together. So part of why I went in and outlined these first instead of just coming in with the brush is because I wanted to give myself some fairly good guidelines to work with when I get in here with the brush and start brushing in the ink. Um, like I've said before, some, some artists can get in here and they can just start going freehand with the brush or the pen and I've done it as well and I, and I'm, you know, I probably will do some drawings in the future where I just jump in with the pen and start and start drawing. But for the most part, the drawings that I do are planned out and I do pencil drawings, which you can see the pencil drawing here um, to map out what I'm, what I'm doing to, Get the proportions and the positioning of things right and the way I want them. Um, I'm I, I consider myself to be more of a realistic artist. Um, I don't do very much in the way of uh, abstract or anything like that. Um, I like to create artwork that represents something realistically and so to that end when I'm doing my ink drawings I want to have a, a fairly good roadmap to work with from the beginning so that's why I come in and do my drawings first and then I ink on top of the pencil and the nice thing about it is when I get done 
the last stage pretty much of most of my drawings is for me to go in and erase any of the pencil marks that are still there and once that's done you don't see the any of the guidelines that I put down um, I know some artists who actually leave those in place and for their particular style it works I've, I've seen some artists who've done that and and it really looks good I mean it's just you know, it's, it's part of their drawing. It's, it's, it's the way they work. Uh, for me, I like to erase the lines because I like to just have the, the, the ink. I, I like for people to focus on the ink work and, and the line work that I've done with the pens, or in this case, the brush work that I'm doing. Now, even though these little areas in the grill, they're not big areas, but for me to sit there with uh, one of my fine liner pens and try and fill these in as quickly as what I'm doing with the brush would take quite a while. And I can, I can do this with the brush pretty quickly. Fill these in fairly quickly and Get on to other more exciting things. You know, there's there's always the risk using the brush that you can get a little overzealous and you can get outside of where you're wanting to put it down. It's just a matter of taking your time, being patient with it. And when I load this brush up with ink, I'm, I'm not dipping the whole brush down into the ink. I'm, I'm really dipping about half of the bristles down into the ink. I don't want to load the ink all the way up to the, the ferrule of the brush. I, I want to keep controlled amount in there. If you get too much in there, then you run the risk of the ink wanting to flow off the brush a little bit faster or with more volume than what you're really wanting to get. So I dip it in there, wipe a little bit off and then just go right back in here and start putting it in there. I can always come back in at some point in time and I can clean these lines up and I may or may not do that with this drawing it just depends on how it's looking as I get towards the end of it every drawing that you do or at least every drawing that I do it it has certain qualities and certain characteristics to it that you, you, you kind of say, okay, I want it to have this feel. Or I want it to have this look. And, you know, sometimes a, a less precise, a less finished look works out well. With this car being that it is an older antique and it is already dinged and dented in several places and it's banged up, um, having my lines be, you know, perfectly straight and, and, and refined looking may not be the, the look that I want. Um, but that's up to you to decide. That's, you know, it's kind of, you get to decide as you're doing your work, how it feels, the look that you want it to have. And you can change it up midstream even if you're if you're going all of a sudden you realize 
yeah, I don't like the way this is looking, then you can say I want a more refined look. And you can go back in and you can touch things up and correct things, or you can have a more um, sketchy look. So it looks more like a, a quick sketch look or a, a, a more unfinished look to it. And there's, you know, there's, it's, again, it's a subject matter. It's, it's what you're going for as far as the appearance that you want. And beauty is, as the artist, that's up to you to decide. Now this lower grill, fortunately, is going a little bit more quickly for me. Uh, these areas in between the in the grill work are a little bit larger, so I can work a little bit more quickly in here until I get right onto the edges, and then I have to slow down a little bit, try and keep it somewhat in the lines. And I think as I start to get this in here, that the drawing at least is going to start to look more like what it is. You'll, you'll start to be able to see the, the car develop and it'll, it'll start looking more and more like a car. I was looking at it last week after I got done working on it and uh, the with what I did up here with just the window and a little bit of the shadow areas under the hood. It was kind of, I say I don't do abstract, but I kind of did last week. It was kind of an abstract looking work last week with what I had gotten done. So I'm hoping that when I get done this evening, that it'll look a little bit more like a car than what it did last week. I think with, with these older cars, um, the, the grill work and, and the chrome and, and the design of these things, they were, they were just, some of them were absolute works of art in their own right. Um, whoever came up with the, the designs for these vehicles was really in tune with, with how curves and, and reflections and, and shapes work together. Um, yeah, they weren't really focused on aerodynamics back in the day they were they were really looking at the aesthetic of the vehicle you know um they'd gone from the model t which was a really um boxy looking vehicle um but it was very functional and once the automobile market was obviously a big market based on the Model T and a few other cars, uh, the manufacturers started trying to figure out how could they appeal to the buyers and the drivers and, you know, to, to compete with one another. And the, the, the design of the, of the cars these is how they did it. I mean, they, they started designing automobiles that were really unique and really, like I said, works of art in and of themselves.
Uh, let's see, what was I going to do here? Okay. Yeah, just bear with me a second. I'm, I'm looking at my reference material here and trying to sort something out. Okay. Sorry about that. Sometimes when you, when you are doing this, you just, you have to stop a little bit and take a look at what you've done and what you're doing to make sure you are on the right path. I just want to make sure I was looking at something the, the way it was and not just what I thought it was. Okay, so I think that will do it for the brush at this point. And I'm just rinsing the brush out in some water. I talked about that last week. And then after I rinse the brush out, I still have some ink in there. So after I after I rinse my brush out, I'll take it and I'll actually put the brush in the crease of my hand and I will twirl it. Hopefully you can see that okay. But I twirl it and kind of pull it through my hand. And what I'm doing is just trying to shape the brush a little bit. Oh, I still have a lot of ink in there. I think I'm going to just let that soak in the water. Um, but that's what I do. I, I twirl it and I use the crease of my hand like that to, to shape the bristles and keep the brush with a nice shape. As it dries, it holds that shape. And it just it makes it ready to go for the next time. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time trying to make the, the bristles do what you need them to do the next time around. So just a little tip if you're doing that. Um, okay, so now let's get into doing some pen work again. Uh, this is, yep, that'll work. So you see I'm testing my pens over here. I wanna see the nib size that I'm going to be using and I'm going to grab my glasses. I could not find these last week, but I got them this week and we are going to start over here on this hood. I want to get this hood finished out or the, the, the shadow in this hood. I want to finish that out um, just so I can see this shape a little bit better. go and now I want to do a little bit of work up here on this side where I brought this shadow up I just want to be able to see what I'm looking at here a little bit more completed there we go okay And now I think I will start working down here a little bit to define some of this. So another thing with, with these older cars, and you, um, you just don't see it on, on most cars today, um, these cars had massive, massive bumpers. I mean, these were just amazing pieces of, of iron that were on the front ends of these cars. Um, they were pretty significant. And I mean, if you, if you ran into something with the front end of one of these things, 
you probably weren't going to damage the car as much as you were going to damage whatever you ran into. And you look at the bumpers today, um, the, well, we really don't have bumpers so much today as what you do there. I mean, they've just, they're, they're kind of part of the, the shape of the body now more than anything. But I definitely remember as a kid, um, oops, some of the bumpers that, that were on the cars that my folks earned. I'm going to pull this back just a bit here. I knock that back a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I was saying, they were, they were just, they were just massive pieces of metal. Definitely did not want to be on the business end of one if you were in a wreck. Oh, I've got a few viewers in here. Um, I guess I need to say hi to Kaylee, who is now my daughter-in-law. Um, hi, Kaylee. I'm glad you tuned in, and congratulations. Um, you are already part of the family, but welcome to the family anyways. So she is also getting ready to graduate from college here before too long. Um, and she's been working on that for a long time, along with being a single mother. And we're very proud of her. Um, she's, she's worked hard for it, and, and we're excited for her. We're excited to see what she does with it over the years. Plus, we're hopeful that she'll be rich enough that she'll be able to support us in our old age. That's, uh, that's one of the other reasons I'm really happy she's graduating. So, but we love you, Kaylee. <laughs> So I see we've got a few people in here. Um, if you'd like to, please uh, jump in there and leave me a comment. Um, let me know who you are. Let me know what you think so far. Um, if I see you pop up in there, up there in the comments, I will certainly acknowledge you. And uh, but I thank you anyways for being here. I, I appreciate you tuning in. Let me know what you think about the stream, about the drawing. So I know, I know it seems like I'm jumping around a lot here, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put in some lines in areas where I know I'm going from a lighter area to a, a shadow area. And if you watch when I did the drawing of the parrot, you'll, you'll see that I use those lines as kind of my guide to, to show, okay, this is going to be an absolute black shadow in my drawing. And that lets me then come in here and do my cross hatching. And I can bring that from a lighter shadow area down to an area that is almost a, 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 just a black shadow area. Um, so I do that most of the time when I do drawings, when I do pen and ink drawings. Um, 
it's something I was taught to do years ago and it's worked well for me over the years. So I, I just pretty much stick to it because it, it has worked so well. So if you'll notice on, and this is this is a good area where, where it shows, if you look at the reference photo, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I don't have the reference photo up. I apologize for that. There we go. Um, but if you look at the reference photo on this part of the fender, okay, you'll see where it's, it's really, really deep shadows in here. And then as it gets up to the curve of the fender, it, it goes from dark shadows to mid-value shadows and, and then to a pretty light gray up in here relatively quickly. And by doing it this way, it's, it's, it's letting me know that this is going to be a hard shadow area in here. I'm fixing this over here. This has been bothering me since last week, the way I filled that in. It was looking a little blocky. I see we have a few more people that are watching the stream. Uh, welcome, and I appreciate you tuning in. Um, if you're, if this is your first time tuning in, uh, thank you for tuning into the stream. If you're returning, I appreciate you coming back and watching my stream. Um, uh, definitely feel free to leave me messages in the comment section. Over there, if I see that you put a message up, I always like to know who's here. If you want to share that you're here, I appreciate that. And if you have any questions or comments, um, I'm always happy to answer them if I, if I see them pop up. And I know I mentioned it earlier, but if you get an opportunity, if you would subscribe and like, the channel that would be a huge help to me to help me grow the channel uh, gets definitely gets it more attention out there in the world of youtube and if you hit the small notification bell as well um, every time i post a new video every time i have a live stream coming up you will get a notification of it 
so you can tune in again if you'd like. And feel free to let me know uh, if there's other um, subjects you'd like me to draw, that you'd like to see me draw various things. I've got some things already planned for down the road, but I'm always open to suggestions and ideas. So if there's something that you would like to see me draw, just uh, throw it in the comments. Hey. All right, so we are coming close to the end of this particular live stream. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I know I have. I've, I've really enjoyed doing these live streams. It's been a definitely a learning experience for me to, to start doing this. Um, and... It's also been it's also been good for me because it gives me the incentive to get in here and draw on a regular basis and it also gets me to work on drawings until completion um, one of probably one of my biggest um, issues I've had over the years is I would start drawings and I either would lose interest in the drawing or it would get to a point where it wasn't working out and so I would kind of hang it up. Um, I think I've gotten away from that a little bit more over the years, but it's still, it's a, it's a good way for me to practice and bring my drawings to completion which i think is a good thing i think it's an important thing right. now i'm going to 
real quickly here. I'm actually going to go with a pen. It's a, a lighter ink pen. So instead of the, the black ink I've been using, I'm going to come in here and fill in this mirror with the lighter ink. Okay. And then as I come in here and build this up, you'll see I can, by laying over it again, I can continue to darken it. But what I'm trying to preserve is there's like a little highlight over here. And I want to preserve that, that highlight because that's what's going to help to define the shape of this mirror. And this is, it's round, but it's got a, a shape to it. So this is definitely not just flat. And now by coming in there like that, I'm able to kind of paint that in. Now I can come back in with my black pen and I can start to darken up the really, really dark shadow areas. And I've been able to still safeguard that highlight. I, I, I'm able to lay it in. I know where it's at. I know where it belongs. So, okay. I think that's going to do it for this week. Um, again, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I, I truly do appreciate it. Um, I will be back here again live next Thursday, 630 Central Time. And I invite you all to join me again. Um, tune in, watch what I'm doing. Please feel free to share. Please feel free to comment. And I will see you next week. Uh, until then, everybody, please keep drawing and have a great week. Take care.